So this is what the layout of my classroom looks like. And I choose to group my students for a variety of reasons. Number one, they can share materials. Um, and then number two, they've got peers around them that they can get ideas from or ask um, help from. So I have four large table groups in my classroom and there's eight tables at each group. Then um, I number all of my desks um, for a variety of reasons, but I write a number in the bottom left corner of the desk um, in Sharpie marker. It wears off over time, and then I just re uh, rewrite it again. So every desk is numbered. Then four tables make up a group. So the group number is hanging above a set of four. So I have eight groups in the room, but then there are colored um, orbs hanging from the ceiling. So groups one and two are the blue tables. Groups um, three and four in the back are the orange tables. Group five and six are the yellow tables, and seven and eight are the green tables. So I give a lot of directions and instructions based on their table groupings. Um, here is an example of supplies and how I do that. So um, the buckets are numbered just for accountability um, so that if a bucket is a disaster, I know what group um, had that bucket if they're not staying on the tables. So I have wide markers, skinny markers, crayons, rulers inside of just a little basket caddy. Then there's a smaller container that right now has ink pens, pieces of erasers, and handheld sharpeners. Then... Um, we have four sets of colored pencils. They always have a trash bucket. This keeps them in their seat so they don't have to get up to throw things away. However, I don't let them put sticky things or germy things in this trash can. Um, so if they have to sharpen their pencil, they just get the sharpener. They sharpen it over the trash can. It keeps them in their seat. And if they drop it, it's easy to pick up and not throw away. When kids sharpen over big trash cans and they drop it, they don't tell me because they don't want to put their hand in the big trash and it you know, gets lost. So um, this year I created this tape system. Each box has a piece of washi tape on the outside. It was a little time consuming, um, but I had some students help with this. So every pencil has the corresponding washi tape on the end of it. So this makes cleanup go so much faster. Um, they can just match the tape up to their box and then all 24 of these pencils belong in this box and that's how we keep them as complete sets. Then I will add supplies as needed. So like today they needed Sharpie markers so I just put four in a bucket. It's easy for me to count that there's still four at cleanup and then collect those. Um, then this is how I expect baskets to be left at the end of the day and I don't dismiss students until their supplies are organized. Uh, then we have um, a designated location where I keep sketchbooks. My school is on a two day rotation so we have a purple day and a white day. So in this cabinet, <laughs> are my containers of sketchbooks and every class has a number and um, a color so students who sit at yellow table on second period and it's a purple day this is their basket so the labels here and the shelf is here so they know where to put this back then um, inside the box we have our sketchbook folders um, they decorate a cover and then they put all their assignments into the sketchbook with the three prong folder so we add to that um, throughout the semester these stay in my classroom 90 percent of the time so that um, students don't lose their sketchbooks and because i don't see them every day it's hard for them to remember what uh, materials they need so if it's in my room it's just easier that way it's also really easy for me to grade because I just flip through the pages and I can just grade right there. I don't have to um, collect a bunch of papers and pass back a bunch of papers because it's just in their sketchbook. So that also makes it easy. One kid from each group just goes and gets their sketchbooks and brings it to their table. One person puts them away at the end of class. Um, then I also have cabinet storage um, for projects. So I don't label these cabinets until I actually need them because the labels change constantly. So currently, I have a set of doors for each color group um, around my room. 
And my seventh graders are sculpting right now, so they needed buckets to store their sculptures in. And I just kind of tape out the shelves to make space um, for buckets. So my buckets are organized by class period and class color. Um, so second period purple day is 2P. Each kid then also needed their own individual container to keep their sculpture in. So I just have um, a pile of cardboard trays. Um, they are altering a Precious Moments figurine. This will, this is day one, so they haven't actually altered them yet. Um, but their project will be kept in here and all their clay materials, and this is how they are storing things. So it's nice to keep these cabinets flexible. Sometimes a kid gets an individual space where they'll tape their name tag inside the blue section. Um, sometimes I make a whole cabinet um, one class period, but really I have learned that cleanup is crazy if I have 30 kids trying to get to the same cabinet doors. So on this side of the room, I have yellow and green table. So yellow and green keep their projects on the side closest to them. On the other side of the room, I have orange and blue. So that's why their cabinets are on the other side of the room. So it splits the kids in half at cleanup time. So they're not all trying to get in one area at the same time. Um, another strategy I do is I have a borrow pencil box. I took an Amazon box. I put a label on it, I've stabbed holes in it, and I numbered them. So this represents um, their desk number. So it literally says, take the pencil that matches number on your desk, return it at the end of class. So if they sit at desk one, then they take the number one pencil. They don't need to ask permission, they don't give me collateral, they literally just take a pencil, they use it, they put it back at the end of class. It's very fast for me to see if my pencils are here, um, and then I just call out the number of the missing pencils and I don't dismiss them until all my pencils are returned. All right, at the beginning of the year, um, I initially just have this area available for early finishers. So I just bought these hanging file folders on Amazon. And then I just create or print out coloring pages or connect the dot drawing pages. Um, then I've got how to draw books. I've got white paper in here. So initially, early finishers just take something out of the folder. It doesn't take up countertop space. And it's just an easy system that I can refill things as needed to put into that area.